Greetings, and welcome to another episode of LGR Thrifts. This is already episode three, <laughs> which is cool. I guess you guys are enjoying this. So yeah, we're going to keep doing this. And what is this? Well, this is me talking. Uh, this is also a series where I am going around to local and not so local thrift stores, going thrifting, looking for anything really of interest, uh, mainly old games, uh, PC games, computers, electronics, anything like that. And uh, yeah, just documenting that because why not? So uh, yeah, let's see what we got today. First up today is one of these smaller Goodwills in my area, and I usually don't find a ton of stuff here, but you know, I always stop by if I'm going to the post office or something, and <laughs> found a few interesting little racing games here. Uh, this is the, I don't know, it's a trilogy of A2 Racer games, which, uh, that's interesting to find in America. Oh crap, I just dropped a cassette tape. Also found a copy of Windows XP Professional, it's got the serial key and all sorts of stuff in there, which is cool. And a copy of DDR Universe 3 for the 360, but it was like $25, and yeah, I just don't, I don't even. An interesting board game, Who Do You Do? The game of who you would do if you could. Jesus. Looking over in the housewares section, I normally don't expect to find anything, but well. Then I run across this here, this is a, it's a Nintendo Entertainment System for $5, and it comes with an NES Advantage and some cables and stuff. No controllers, no games, but for 5 bucks, yeah. Moving right along to probably my favorite Goodwill in the air. Oh, what did they do? Oh, no. Well, uh, apparently they're expanding it. That's cool, but, um, man, it's looking pretty, pretty harsh at the moment. But let's just go inside, because inside it's okay. Over near the computers, we've got some software and some other junk just kind of thrown in here. But, uh, see, a couple Wii games caught my eye, but then they caught the opposite of my eye. Ran across this game with interesting artwork that looked like Hard Ginger, it's Hard Binger, and a copy of The Sims 2 for the Nintendo DS. That's pretty neat. On the other side of the same stand, I found a copy of AVP2 Gold for PC. It's got some stickers, nothing a little Gugon won't fix. Found this whole box of Ubisoft USB webcams. I, I don't know what these are a part of. If anyone knows, let me know, because they had a ton of them here. Had some decently priced game console bundles here, uh, PS2s, an Xbox, a couple PS1s, several PS2 bundles actually. Some of these were not badly priced at all, $25, but I already have a PS2 fat and I just don't care for any more. If they were Slims, it'd be a different story. While I was looking around, they actually brought out some more PS2 games in that same section. Found Resident Evil Code Veronica X, X-Men Next Dimension, Need for Speed Carbon, Copy of Blood Rain, which didn't have the disc in it. Uh, God of War 2, Mortal Kombat Deception. Chronicles of Narnia, which you don't care about, didn't get it. And one or two others in here too. And of course, always looking in the board games, because I like to look for big box PC games and software. Even though I didn't want this Adobe Photoshop Album 2.0 thing, I did run across a copy of NASCAR Racing 1999 edition in the big box. I'll take it. Wandering around the houseware section and <laughs> <laughs> wow, somebody just completely unloaded all of their trophies and like various awards. Man, this person played a lot of sports. Or maybe a school just got rid of their trophy cases. Man, I don't even know. This is ridiculous. And looking through the electronics, as always, just looking for anything interesting, any weird consoles, or maybe a laser disc player or something. I don't know. Anything. But uh, not really much of interest. Either stuff that I already have or just don't really care for. It's always interesting to just look through this, though, because I found some really odd and little unique things in here. This is kind of unique, though. This is a Windsor radio that's shaped like an early 90s computer. I was intrigued, but, I mean, $4, uh, whatever, and it's a radio. I just don't really need radio. Ah, yes! Wireless Sports! Do you remember this console? Definitely not ripping off anything by Nintendo or anything at all like that. I mean, this is very unique. Pretty sure it was the best-selling console of all time. And on the way out of the building, I actually noticed they had a player piano for sale. I just find these things interesting. It was $175. I mean, it, I, I don't have a use for it. I don't have the space for it, but uh, whatever, man. Interesting stuff at Goodwill. So I went on to yet another Goodwill. One that I've had lots of luck at before. 
In the auction case, they had what appeared to be someone's entire Pokemon collection for sale, as well as one very respectable collection of console games. And consoles! I mean, good grief, there's an NES in here, multiple PlayStations, Xboxes, Wiis, Wii Fit boards, strategy guides, I mean, this was just a ton of stuff, but it was going for $150, and, you know, I had most of it anyway. Not worth my time. Just wandering around, kind of feeling lucky after finding that $5 NES in the housewares, but here all I found was a box of Duck Dynasty dog biscuits. <laughs> Seriously though. Thought I'd take a look through the loose CDs and DVDs and software, and I found one or two things in here. This weird game called Bridge Baron 15. The cover intrigued me, so I bought it. And as I was just about to leave, I happened to look in the cabinet that usually doesn't have anything of interest, and I found two Wii U games, one of which was Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. This game was just released and it was $20. Pfft, yeah, I'll take it. Stopping by another Goodwill, one that we actually have not been to in these videos yet. A little bit out of the way, but I found some decent stuff here before, always checking these glass cases, because <laughs> I don't even know. Sometimes you strike gold. Looking over in the LPs section, and well, what do you know? I found more laser discs. Not much of interest to me here. I actually already own Alien on laser discs, so I didn't grab it. But they did have a few interesting titles in here. A live Scorpions show, which balls, yeah, why not? Some other movies that uh, I just don't really care about. But hey, found Mortal Kombat Annihilation, which this is not a very good movie, but it's Mortal Kombat on Laserdisc. Get over in the DVDs and software, found a copy of Rainbow Six Vegas 2 for the PC. Three dollars, pretty fair, and I can clean these stickers off. But their console game selection, I don't know what they were thinking, everything is eight dollars. Robotech was tempting, but I mean, come on, big bumpin' for $8? Are you kidding me? Pocket Bike Racer, a Halo without any artwork, uh, seriously? No. Scouting around the electronics, because electronics. Found a couple of Xboxes, $15 each, but neither of them came with cables or controllers or anything like that. And I'm assuming the games that they came with were out there for $8 each, and they sucked. On the way back into town, I decided I would stop by this Rescue Mission Thrift store. We haven't been here on LGR Thrifts yet. And this is just kind of a free-for-all thrift store. I mean, just about anything you can think of is in here somewhere at some point or another. I haven't had a ton of luck buying things here, but you do find an interesting thing or two on occasion. Here's this sharper image design CD player that just intrigued me with its design in a sharper image, perhaps. Didn't buy it, but I don't know. I like fiddling with it. A few printers, a bunch of cables, some keyboards and scanners and joysticks and ceiling fans, rotary phones. <laughs> Just a bunch of crap all over the place. A mountain of CDs and LPs and VHSs. One or two things of computer software, a game here and there, but it's either stuff I already had or was not interested in. But this is more my style. This glass case on the way out of the store had some intriguing PC titles in here. A big box copy of Stronghold, which was unfortunately completely crushed or else I would have bought it. A couple Star Wars Lego games, which I ended up grabbing since they were boxed. And as I was looking at some of the loose games, I noticed this NES in a basket just sitting there. It was priced at $30, came with a bunch of stuff. The lady just gave it to me for 15 because it had been sitting there so long, so of course I got it. And since I was feeling lucky, I hit up a place I normally don't, and that is a local pawn shop. Now these completely differ from thrift stores and the fact that they will pay you for the items that you bring in. But yeah, a lot of the same kind of fare though, just more of it. DVDs, Blu-rays, and DVD and Blu-ray players, TVs, motorcycle helmets, musical instruments, amps, and a big fat slice of America right in here. Oh yes, these people are licensed firearms dealers, and man, Glocks, Rugers, Berettas, hollow sights, laser sights, revolvers, 1911s. You want a friggin' Thompson submachine gun? Here it is. Ugh, shotguns, hunting rifles, AR-15s, crossbows, America! So much I had to go to a baseball game right after this, so I could properly salute Old Glory and eat cheeseburgers. Back to the pawn shop, I did find a bin of PS2 and Xbox games. 
For 99 cents each, I found some pretty good titles that I was wanting in here. Uh, several of the Ratchet and Clank games, No One Lives Forever, and then I ran across this. This is a copy of Intelligent Cube for the PS1. It was missing the manual, but it had the disc and the back insert. I already had a copy because I liked the game, but you can't just pass this up. Several others in here, a game called Ring of Red that I'd never heard of. El Shaddai for the Xbox 360, that one's intrigued me for a while, and some Wii games even. I grabbed a copy of No More Heroes, because Suda51. And yeah, sometimes when I'm out and looking at games that I don't normally collect for, I have to consult a log of my collection that I keep on my phone to make sure I don't get duplicates. Because yeah, I just don't like to buy stuff and resell, typically. And here's the haul for this thrift store adventure. 34 games. Two consoles, two laser discs, a copy of Windows XP, and a bunch of like random cables and stuff. Not bad at all. Came to a total of $148. Quite a few games in here, too, that I've been wanting to try, and hopefully now I will get a chance to. I still can't believe I found Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. A game seriously just came out. How in the world that ends up at Goodwill, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it came from Target or something. That happens. Having two more laser discs, oh, that's just great. I love collecting laser discs, even if they're not the best movies. I love the artwork. And all these PS2 games, yeah, I'm quite satisfied with these. Especially since the majority of them were 99 cents. A few of them are missing the manuals, but the games and artwork is all here and in pretty good shape, so I'm happy. And after just a little bit of cleaning up, I have two NES systems, and they both work perfectly. I'm probably going to be selling one of them because I already have one, so I don't know. I don't need three. And it also came with all of this stuff in the basket. A couple of controllers, some weird third-party one, all the cables needed and then some, and two NES zappers. Which actually worked out very well since I got two systems. And of course, we cannot forget Intelligent Cube. I am just psyched to have found this. Like I said, I already own the game, but I actually got this for the sole purpose of reselling, and it's rare that I do that, but this is just a game that doesn't deserve to be lost in some bin for 99 cents. And hey, I ended up selling it for almost $40. That's it for episode three of LGR Thrifts, and I hope you join in next time. And uh, oh yeah, before I forget, uh, a lot of you guys have actually been asking what I use to record this. And uh, well, sometimes I just use my phone uh, when I, I'm just out somewhere randomly and I'm not actually planning to record a Thrifts episode. Uh, other times I use these here, and these are uh, glasses-mounted camera. Uh, this is the Inventio HD Pro 1080p set of camera glasses. And as you can see here, I mean, these work pretty well. <laughs> I would highly recommend these. You know, you just set record here, and it's got a 135-degree field of view, uh, which is nice, because if you have a field of view that's too low, you get a lot of motion sickness, like really jerky movement, because, I mean, these are mounted on your head. Typically, you don't treat your head as, like, a stable tripod or a steady cam. So, yeah. But anyway, these are really nice. They're pretty friggin' cheap, too, so check them out. I'll put a link to them in the video description. But anyway, that's that, and uh, yeah, that's that, that, that's all. So, thank you for watching.